Uh, I, it's good to see your lace uh, patterns behind you today. They're looking like rather. Yes, I've left, positioned it so that hopefully you can see those. <laughs> oh, they're wonderful. Now, um, thank you so much for um, agreeing to be uh, my first interviewee as part of the Legacy of Lace uh, project. Um, it's it's wonderful to actually have this opportunity to ask you lots of questions. Um, because um, I'm always in, in awe of you and, and the exquisite work you, you create. So um, I, uh, I think this is uh, just, just um, wonderful for me to have this opportunity and for also for you to be involved in the Legacy of Lace project. So we're going to be um, in residence at Arrowash Museum in, um, in Ilkeston from May to June and we're going to be creating some artwork inspired by lace so uh, it's quite open at the moment but I thought I'd just um, do a little bit of an intro because you're a, a bobbin lace maker and designer um, you're based at um, in Derby um, and um, you know you've done all sorts of wonderful projects um, I, I just thought I know I've been on your classes and I, I consider myself as a beginner still <laughs> um, and I'm definitely going to return to uh, making bobbin lace very soon. Um, I just wondered if you could explain to the viewers what bobbin lace is because um, I know some people might not be familiar with what it is and, and what you do. Everybody thinks of lace from Nottingham being machine lace or they should think of it as machine lace. Everybody says Nottingham, oh, it's lace. But bobbin lace is the forerunner to machine lace. And it is made by winding threads on individual bobbins, which are then attached to a lace pillow, which I'll show you in a moment. And it's a form of free form weaving, really. You start off with a lace pattern with lots of holes in it, which you prepare before you start. And then that is the sort of thing you can make from it. This is a new pattern that I've recently designed. Oh, I love that one. Once you've made the pattern, you then attach it to a lace pillow and then start putting pins in and weaving with the bobbins. It looks very complicated when you first start, but there are only two stitches. And as Victoria will tell you, it's not as overwhelming once you actually learn the two stitches and start learning how to put them together in patterns. And everybody thinks of lace as being perhaps old fashioned and, and white. But as you can see from our latest one, it doesn't have to be white. And it also doesn't have to be flat. This is a, a 3D angel I made recently with lace for the Christmas uh, decorations. That's beautiful. I've done lace in 3D with wire and made it into sculpture using exactly the same two techniques, two stitches to form it. So it can be any scale you like in any material as long as you can wind it round the bobbins. Right. So you're only limited by your imagination as to what you want to create from it. And when you start thinking along the lines of, I want to produce whatever 3D, then you work out how to use those two techniques to build a 3D image or a 3D piece. Oh, that's incredible. So, so what, what brought you to um, lace making, bobbin lace making? What, what sparked this passion? How long well, ago was it? In the early 90s, I saw someone demonstrating it at an event, thought it, oh, it looks interesting. I wonder what's involved. And then I found a residential course for five days went on the course and came back totally hooked. I mean, people say, why do you do it? And I'll say, sit down and have a go, because once those bobbins get hold of you, you just can't put them down. Okay. There's something very meditative about it by moving the bobbins in a, a controlled manner that makes you lose time. It just disappears. <laughs> right. So it's quite meditative, really. <laughs> it is, yes. It's very meditative. And you, you just forget about everything else that's happening in the world and just lose yourself in lace. So what have you been and making? it's great to be able to... Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's great to be able to create something from a simple thread. And the threads can be cotton, silk, string if you want to make big scale. You can use knitting wools for scarves. You can do anything with it. So what have your been, right, so, your, been your projects through lockdown? What have you been creating whilst we've been at home? Um, 
I published my second book in lockdown last June. I've been selling those online. So the, the also, book, tell us about the book, what's um, that that's involved? The book is English Books Point um, work, Lace Workbook, and it's a beginner's book for beginners to Books Point, but not necessarily beginners to Bobbin Lace. So if you already know the two stitches and you want to venture into a new type of lace, a new, new style, it takes you through all the basic techniques to learn that lace. So you and say it's say Bucks Point. What what do you mean by Bucks Point? Bucks Point is a style of lace, like Nottingham lace is made on machines, but Bucks Point is using the same techniques I haven't got on to hand now. <laughs> now you've asked me that. Um, <laughs> it's a, a particular style of lace. I generally specialise in Bedfordshire or Bucks Point. The Angel and the, the Easter egg I've just shown you are both Bedfordshire lace. And there's certain techniques within it and uh, styles. Like you, you know what Art Nouveau is, but to try and define it is quite difficult. Right. But you can recognise it from Art Deco, for instance. There's just styles within it that Books Point and Bedfordshire have particular characteristics in. Yeah. I mean, we, we had an exhibition um, a few years ago. That was when I first met you at New College yes. Nottingham. We had a, an exhibition we brought together with your handmade bobbin lace and my paintings of manufactured lace. And it was just wonderful to meet you and, and get to know more about bobbin lace because I knew absolutely nothing. I know that I'd hung my nose over pillows in a museum and, and looked at the bobbins and the threads and, and the pins and the um, all the beaded bobbins yeah. which which really fascinated me visually but I knew nothing about it so um I've I've attended a f some well quite a lot of your classes and um I'm, I'm quite a slow learner I have to say <laughs> but um I I I did have certainly got hooked and I thoroughly enjoyed it and because I was painting lace before um actually learned to make it I realized after I started making lace I was understanding the movements and the threads and where they travel and I realized that my painting was was sort of getting more detailed and I started thinking about the, the where I was making the lines and actually would that be true to the pattern of the lace so it's it's really complex when you start to think about it and I was really pleased that uh, you reminded me the other day that I'd actually made one of those angels I think without the wings but um I did actually make an angel which um it's, if I can do it, you know, I'm sure a lot of people can, you know, start start making lace themselves. So um, well, the, the angel you made was a Russian lace angel and that only used eight pairs of bobbins. So you don't need a huge quantity of bobbins to actually make a really nice piece of lace. Yes, and I, I, it's a piece that I'm quite proud of. Well, I, I was learning to make lace to actually um, cut up fragments to put on my paintings, which I have started to do, because I was putting uh, manufactured lace collage and that onto my paintings and then realised that um, I didn't want to use the lace. I wanted to make my own. So that's why I started to do the classes with you. And yeah. I have put fragments on my paintings. Um, and what what... I find really interesting because with this project Legacy of Lace I'm starting the project with the manufactured lace um, which was created mainly on the Levers lace machines. Yes. Um, so as I understand it the the lace that was made on the Levers ma lace machines that was twisting the threads together and weaving them so is that is it just replicating really what the bobbin lace maker is is making? It's trying to replicate it. When you know the techniques, you can look at a piece of lace and distinguish whether it is handmade or, or machine made. There are certain things within it. The picots that you get on the edge, I mean, you've got them on this angel, I don't know whether you can see them on the edge of the wings. They're very looped. They're looped around a pin and they are quite difficult. They're very different on the machine lace, even though they may look similar they are quite distinctly different in appearance. Yeah. And also the woven cloth areas on the machines, they aren't quite a balanced, even weave cloth. They're, they're longer in uh, one, either the warp or the weft, I can't remember which way around it is. And it just doesn't look quite right somehow. It's not a balanced weave. And it doesn't always look as though it's quite woven through in the same way. It's there's just something about it that you can distinguish those two areas in particular. And of right. course, in handmade lace, you very often get mistakes. 
which you don't get in machine lace. If you've got a mistake, it's re replicated down the length of lace. In handmade machine lace, it won't be in the same place twice. Right. Yeah. So those machine, uh, those mistakes help you identify machine lace from handmade as well. All oh, right. Yes. I mean, I know with um, when I was coming to classes with uh, having classes with you, I can remember you 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 said earlier that you can use make lace with lots of different threads sorts yes. of threads um but i remember most distinctly the time you were working on a piece with actual gold um yes uh, would you, could you tell everybody about that project that you did there yes it was a project for national trust for kedleston hall in derby they were renovating the state bedroom and i made 30 meters of lace in real gold threads and it took 18 months well 30 meters you think oh it's just a bit longer than a swimming pool but to actually sit and make the 30 metres is a long time to make it. Uh, it varied between 25 hours and 52 hours a metre. Wow. So it was a big, big project. Yeah. And it was challenging because if you imagine how tinsel is, some of the thread was like flat tinsel. Right. And quite springy. So that to manipulate it and get it to lay flat within the lace was a challenge. And it was used in techniques from the 18th century, which I hadn't used before. And I had to look at the original, draft the original pattern, and then work out how it was done. And it was quite a challenge because it's very little published on the 18th century gold laces. Oh, that's um, the only books I've found are in German, and I don't speak German to know oh. what they actually say. And the, the more a historical reference book than actually telling you how to do it as well. That's an amazing project to be involved in. and um, It was, yeah, it was great. <laughs> and it looks fantastic on the bed now and on the curtains and yes. the overhead I'll, tester panels. I look forward to it opening again and we can go and have a look at it again yeah. more closely. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, another project you were involved in, uh, which is completely different to that, was um, you, you had involvement with the design of, of the... Um, frontage of the Nottingham Contemporary Gallery yeah, in Nottingham. Yeah. Can you uh, tell our viewers a, a little bit about that and how you got involved with it? That was the first ever commission that I did. Uh, back in 2006, I was at university and I was approached through the Nottingham Bob and Lace Society um, by the Costume Museum in Nottingham, which is no longer there, unfortunately, to uh, replicate um, an 18th, 19th century piece of uh, lace from Richard Birkin and it was to convert the design it was an edging originally and they wanted to make it double the width but 10 times the original scale so I had to try and replicate that again it was a, a lace I didn't know anything about at the time it was machine Valenciennes which is again has very distinct techniques within it I'm actually currently learning that as a handmade lace now myself um, so it's quite interesting but we produced it, ended up producing it on a computer using Photoshop and it then went off to Germany for the design to be cut into a, a rubber mat to produce the moulds. Came back to Nottingham and was cast into concrete panels and the resulting lace is a metre across from a two inch sample. Yeah, and it was so, incredible when you stand in front of the, the main building and in front of the doors, yes, you can yes. see the pattern above you um, in the concrete. And it's it's quite amazing, really, yes. um, that achievement that you started that. I think um, it was 96 concrete panels and the concrete panels are each up to 11 tonnes of concrete. And wow, absolutely massive project. But I only did the digital renovation of the, the design originally, and then I lost sight of it until it actually came into the concrete panels. Right. It's quite strange not to be involved in a, a project right to the end yeah. to actually hand it over your design work over to somebody else to create the, the physical product. So was I like what, to be involved right to the end of a project. Yes, I can imagine. Did, so what was it like going to the Nottingham Contemporary and seeing that for the first time? What was it? It was fantastic. I mean, I did have a behind the scenes visit to Trent Concrete who produced the panels and again, no longer in existence, unfortunately. And I saw the concrete panels being prepared, how the moulds were made for them and the whole production process. And that was quite a fantastic experience. 
to see what they'd actually done with it. Oh, it'd be amazing. Absolutely wonderful. And then I went along when they started installing the panels and just took a lot of photographs of that as well. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, that that'd be amazing. And as yeah. you mentioned that um, it was a Birkin um, lace pattern from Bir yes. is that Birkin and Company, I guess. And um, yes. that was the company, as you know, that my, my father was um, <clears throat> a director of manufacturing at Birkin's. Yeah. And um, I, I did read somewhere that the um, that piece of lace that you worked from was found in a, a capsule that was yes. buried. Yes, it was buried in a time capsule in 1847 in the foundations of the Water Corporation offices, which are now where Marks and Spencer stand. And it was only discovered when Marks and Spencer's was built. This time capsule, and it now resides at Nisted Abbey, they laced us. Oh, wonderful. I wonder if that'll be in the new um, exhibition at the Nottingham Castle as well. I don't know. Is this, um, is, it, is it a cherry lace design, if I remember right, rightly, was it? Um, I think that's what they called it, yes. Yeah, yes. I know, it's, it's wonderful. Um, gosh, there's so much that you've done and achieved. And also, you know, your classes um, that you deliver um, have been delivering pre-COVID times. Um, you were doing lots of face-to-face -face classes in in the UK but also you were started traveling abroad um you you got involved um you did some uh, lace for royalty I believe if I remember rightly yes for Denmark for the yeah. Danish royal family for their golden wedding a couple of years ago now I made a piece of lace it was invited by the Danish lace guild to make it to create a piece and it's called the English hedgerow again it's a Bedfordshire piece it was uh, a panel um try to think of the dimensions about five inches wide by 15 inches long a rectangle of lace and it featured dog english dog rose and daisies and what i didn't realize at the time uh, queen marguerite is nicknamed daisy and i put these daisies in the lace and oh, i had wow. a lovely letter back from a lady in waiting thanking me for the lace some time later which was really nice to know that a piece of lace is in their collection then. Yeah, like, I mean, it's wonderful doing uh, gold, golden lace for Kedleston Hall and then for <laughs> royalty. And, and then also you, you worked your, um, your 3D designs. You were talking about you worked with wire at one point as yes. well. Yes. Um, and you, you made some incredible contemporary wire structures. Uh, I think that was part of your MA course, wasn't yes, it? Yes, I did, I did an MA completely in contemporary yeah. lace. It ended up being all three-dimensional work, worked it mostly in wire. The first piece was mixed media using some laser cutting as well, but mostly in wire. Um, the second year piece was exhibited in the Bose Museum for six months because the inspiration came from there as part of another group I was involved with. And then the final piece was um, five columns of lace in copper wire based on research around plant uh, developments for the 21st century. And they were basically DNA modified plant stems. Wow. The tallest one being a meter tall and about uh, 20 centimeters in diameter. I mean, they, they were quite impressive because I think they yeah. were the ones you brought yeah. to um, the exhibition at New College Nottingham as well in the lace market at that yes. time. I think yeah. there was a couple of them there. And they were just amazing. I, it was just wonderful to have my paintings alongside your work. I think it worked really well together. Now we're going to be um, a, in, involved in, um, well, we're going to be in residence at Erewash Museum, as I said, from May to June. And um, we're, we're all um, as part of this Legacy of Lace um, residency are going to look at um, the area of Arrowash and look at Nottingham lace and then take inspiration from the area from um, the lace or the stories or anything. Have you got any ideas where your starting points might be? Uh, can you give well, we've got to visit to the, the collection at Arrowash Museum and that will be the starting point. I've got one or two ideas of where I'd like to take some of the designs to but I don't know what they've got yet to inspire me. No. Uh, inspiration comes from all sorts of places um and maybe some of your work might translate into handmade lace as well i don't know yeah well it's exciting i'm looking yeah. forward to seeing what we It'd do be quite nice to do a collaboration piece for one of the pieces whatever you decide you know you're working on to then take it back into more traditional lace as well 
Oh, that'd know. be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. And we've also, yeah. um, we're going to be I've in. I've got one or two ideas of where I'd like to take them. But... <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> and we're going to be in residence with um, Hannah Millard, who's a photographer, and Kerry Pratt, who's an abstract painter, and um, Kim Fowler, who's a, an illustrator as well. So, um, you know, the, the, there's going That's to be quite, a, a quite exciting what we're going to be yeah. doing. Um, so, if. Um, you know, if people have been inspired by what you've been saying today about lace and, and they'd like to give it a go, where's the best place for, for people to start? What, what, what do they need to do? At the moment, it's quite difficult because there's no physical classes. I'm hoping this spring, possibly early summer, to be getting back into delivering classes in Derby um, again. At the moment, I've got a YouTube channel, which I'm putting new videos at each week, but they aren't really aimed at beginners, although there is a video on there that shows you the whole process as well. Uh, get in touch with me through the website, have a watch at the videos, lots of things to see and do. Um, and I do run a, a weekly Zoom meeting on a Thursday afternoon for lace makers to support them. So if, if they get started, get stuck, they can always join the Zoom meeting and discuss the problems with us there. Yeah, you kindly invited me to go and talk on um, your Zoom, let, ask Louise Lace questions. Um, and it's it's amazing how that's built up over lock, the, the whole year. Um, and um, the interest you've got involved, people from all over the world are, yes. are getting involved with that. It's nice just to sit and talk Lace because unless you're a lace maker, you don't understand the passion and enthusiasm for it. And some people look at you as so though you've got a strange habit doing this lace making thing. Mm -hmm. But if you can sit and talk to other lace makers when you're perhaps in isolation, as a lot of the ladies are, if they live at home on their own, it just lifts spirits a, a lot and, and solves problems got with the lace. Yeah. Keeps them motivated, keeps them going um, and keeps the passion for lace going in the meantime. That's fantastic, yeah. And what about the, the pieces of um, lace that you've got displayed on the wall behind you? Are they, uh, are they Bedfordshire or? The, yes, yeah, so the three bigger frames, they're Bedfordshire lace. And the little one is Banch. I couldn't even remember what was up there. <laughs> uh, the three bigger pieces, <laughs> they were designed for an exhibition at Della Priabi a couple of years ago. And there is a publication out on the patterns of those. They're still available. Um, and they were all taken from Della Pre Abbey, from features within the architecture at the Abbey. Oh, wow. That's stunning. So, so with the square, with the square largest one, uh, would that have been a design to, to be put onto a handkerchief? It would be. Let's just lift it off so we can see it a bit closer. Oh, beautiful. Oh, stunning. It was actually taken from a stencil ceiling in one of the rooms. Right. That's that's absolutely stunning. Love the floor. The <laughs> yeah. That looks great. So that would have been put onto a, a handkerchief. Yes, it yes, it's that's what it's designed for. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so but it was a stencil ceiling within the um the Della Pre Abbey. I saw it and was absolutely inspired by it. And the other two are both taken from the same ceiling as well. Right, so it's, it's, it's just amazing all these different projects you've, you've been doing over the past few years and where your lace has taken you. So thank you very much for talking to us thank today. You. And um, I'm sure um, I'll have lots more questions for you <laughs> uh, when I've finished this interview and, and maybe we could do another interview at some point. And if That's anybody's good. got any questions um, they've got about bobbin lace making, any questions, Louise let us know because um you know it'd be great to sort of get some interaction going and and get people making lace and, and getting involved yeah. with lace yeah. projects whether it's making lace or being inspired by lace to make something um you know whatever um so hopefully this project will um get people inspired and uh, talking about lace so uh, well thank you Louise very much thank you and, and in the meantime, um, have a look at my YouTube channel. Yes, yes. Just YouTube. search for Louise West Lace on there and subscribe so you can see videos coming up each week. Well, I'm certainly going back on there myself because I've got quite a lot of bobbins to, 
to bead up so yeah. um and i've forgotten how to do it so uh, i'm gonna yes, look at your youtube how video to <laughs> yeah <laughs> how to spangle bobbins is my first uh, trip to your youtube channel <laughs> so thank you louise and um we look forward to seeing the work you're going to be creating in this project so thank you Victoria.